This is a Hongxi EHS9 and is the embodiment of everything that is good and bad about Chinese cars. Because as bad as Chinese cars are, they are also very good and will only become better and better as time passes by. 10 years ago, nobody in the West had even heard about Chinese automakers like BYD, Geely, Hongxi or NIO. Today these are household names in many European countries. The EHS9 represents perfectly everything that is good about Chinese cars. It drives as nice as anything made outside of Europe and is built and put together better than many European cars and offers incredible value. This enormous, luxurious electric SUV with a huge 120 kilowatt hour battery will run you 110,000 euros fully spec. For what you're getting in terms of luxury and features, nothing even comes close. But as good as they are built, as good as they are to drive, they are also equally as bad to live with and to use on a daily basis. After having driven many models from brands like NIO, BYD and Hongxi, this is my experience. Just a quick disclaimer guys, I was supposed to film this video earlier this week when I actually had a Hongxi EHS9 on loan and a lot of the segments in this video I was supposed to film in that car and show you guys first hand. But I became sick and I had to postpone this video to the end of this week when the car was delivered back to Hongxi. So I filmed this in three different European cars and also used some clips from my week with the EHS9. So I hope you guys still enjoy the video. It's currently 4 degrees Celsius outside, as you guys can see there. I've only driven the car 4 kilometers, so about 7 or 8 minutes. And the cabin temperature is already quite comfortable. I've now turned down the temperature to 21 degrees Celsius and actually feels a little bit warm. So I could easily, you know, turn it down to 20 degrees Celsius and be comfortable. And yeah, it's up to temperature. I'm not cold. It's pretty nice in here now just popped into a Volvo XC40 recharge rear wheel drive that I'm gonna have for a few weeks now. The car's been parked overnight and as you guys can see it is four degrees Celsius outside. So we're gonna set the temperature just to maximum. We're also gonna put on the heated seats and stuff like that and look how easily and quickly this infotainment starts even though the car, yeah, I've just turned on the car. It's snappy. So let's drive for a few minutes. It's now 12.38. Let's see how many minutes it takes before the temperature is comfortable in the cabin. Three minutes, guys. It took three minutes for me to turn off the heated seat, to turn the steering wheel, the heated steering wheel down to one, and also turn the temperature down to 21 degrees Celsius. And it's already comfortable in this cabin. Of course, this is a Volvo, which should be better built for you know, colder climates. And that shows because it was quicker to come up to temperature with the seats, with the steering wheel and the cabin than the Volkswagen ID4 GTX. But compare this to any of the Chinese cars I've driven, especially the Hongxi. I've driven that multiple occasions and it was the same story the other day. And that is, it took like 20 or 25 minutes for the car to warm up properly in the cabin. Yes, granted, it is a bigger cabin, but it's, it's, it's strange. Also, the heat the steering wheel and heat the seats took longer time. And also, in all of the Chinese cars I've driven, you have to run the cabin temperature between like 22 and 24 degrees Celsius before it feels comfortable. While in other cars I've driven, between 20 and 21 degrees. Now it's 21 degrees here. This doesn't have half temperatures, which I don't actually mind but putting it down to 20 degrees Celsius, it's still gonna be comfortable in this cabin. This is a completely base Volkswagen ID4 GTX with the standard stereo. There is an upgrade over this called DIN Audio, which is actually pretty decent, but this is the base stereo system and is actually not too bad. Every single day I feel the pressure. 
Yeah, it's a banger. I actually like that song. I just uh, downloaded it. I haven't heard it before, but that's a banger. So this is the the bass stereo. I mean, it's it doesn't have the best highs. Also, the mids not the best, but actually the low downs. If you don't play the music very loudly, it's actually pretty decent. It has pretty decent punch. It has pretty decent, uh, you know, uh, range with uh, with with the sound stage. So so yeah, I I wouldn't complain if I bought this car. I would probably go for the upgraded DIN audio, but this for a bass sound system is actually pretty good. We're now in a Volvo XC40 recharge extended range with the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system. This is one of the lower tiers when it comes to upgraded sound systems because we're still in a relatively cheap car, but just take a listen to, to this. Every single day I feel the pressure. Double love the way, let's make it extra. Breaking so my mother and get arrested. Breaking like I never knew I'm best. Every single day I feel the pressure. Diamonds in my eyes are no special. Yeah, so this is clearly a step up from the ID Force standard sound system, more speakers, more power, a much wider sound stage. I mean, the, the, the high ends here and the mid ends are in a completely different league. It just opens up th this song. It just makes it so much more airy and roomy. And also the download bass is a lot tighter and, and more accurate. So, so this is getting pretty decent, but let's hop into the Taycan with the Bose sound system and take a listen to that. Now in the Porsche Taycan with the Bose sound system and just a disclaimer guys, I mean these audio tests I'm doing now, you're not going to be able to get a real gauge because of my microphone, because of your speakers, my, my, my gear and it may sound a little bit different now because I've switched to my, my lab mic which is a much more high quality microphone than just putting the road on my my jacket which I did earlier because I forgot the the lab microphone so so just just a little bit of disclaimer there but let's put on the song again and I'll just take a quick listen here Okay, so the Bose sound system in this car has been critiqued by a lot of people for being a sound system that really doesn't live up to the Bose name, to the Porsche badge, and is quite expensive for what you get. All of that is true, but I still have to say that it is actually pretty good. And this is dialed in. This is my private vehicle I've had for one and a half years. So, so it, is, it is pretty dialed in to, to my music taste and it works better with some music than other music. But compared to the sounds, sound systems we've heard, it is a lot better. I mean, it's in a completely different league. It's much more balanced where, you know, the uh, Harman Kardon in that XC40 started to p pick up, you know, with, with the high ends and the mid tones and, and the bass. This is just a much more complete sound stage and it is actually pretty good. Is it the best at this price point? Absolutely no. I think both, you know, the uh, Bang & Olufsen in something like a Q8 e-tron and also the uh, Burmester in something like a Mercedes EQE is is better but it's still pretty decent i mean it's about eight tenths of what those sound systems are but compared to any other sound system i've heard from any of the chinese auto manufacturers that that be byd or hongxi or, or neo 
it is in a completely different league. Even the bass sound system in the ID4 is more powerful, more complete than those sound systems. Yes, they may be, some of them may be better here and there, but as an overall listening experience, I'd rather have a sound system that isn't as good at the high ends and the mid ends, but still has, you know, a little bit of bass, bass and treble. So again, I'm not an expert in audio, but I am um, very interested in music and in audio. I've had a lot of good sound systems in cars and, and I've grown up with uh, home theaters and, and really decent sound systems at home. So I'd like to say I'm probably more, you know, um, into this than the, the general person driving any of these cars. And one of the biggest weaknesses that I can't get over and also considering that a lot of these Chinese cars, yes, they do offer great value for the money, but are still a lot of money. Like the Hongxi EHS9 is a lot of money. Something like a Neo ES8 or ET7 is a lot of money. And the sound system in those cars just don't cut it. They're so bad. Before I started this whole YouTube thing, and also during my early days of YouTube, I used to work as a traveling salesman. I could talk about that more in a different video. I haven't talked about that at all, I think, in any video, seven years here on the channel. But before I had a car with adaptive cruise control, it was pretty annoying to drive 50, 60,000 kilometers a year, which I did around Norway. Because people just don't keep a constant speed. People would slow down and brake if the road got turning or if there was a tunnel. But then I got my first Volvo XC90 with adaptive cruise control and that changed everything. It was so much more relaxing and also safe because when you're not frustrated, driving is safe. And what I do love about adaptive cruise control, we do have a car in front of us now, but even if the, car, the road gets turning or it goes up and down, the car will keep a constant speed. It's not before, you know, the car in front of you starts to break, your car will start to break. You do have cars in later years, and this Porsche does have Eno Drive, which has curve assist, but in most cars, you can turn that off because that is super annoying. Of all the Chinese cars I've driven, they have curve assist. I don't even think it's curve assist. It's like steering angle assist. Once you just put a little bit of steering angle, the car will slow down to speed. I'm going to show you a clip now, two clips probably, from testing the Hongxi EHS9, where it's just so frustrating. And of everything I've talked about, or I'm going to talk about in this video, I think this is the biggest deal breaker for me, because adaptive cruise control, and especially cars like this with inner drive, which also gives you, you know, that uh, auto steer function, just makes longer trips, especially on motorways, just safer, and more relaxing and more comfortable. But in Chinese cars, that isn't the case. And for me, that is the biggest deal breaker. The infotainment system in the Volkswagen ID4 is an infotainment system that was completely new for the ID platform. First was introduced with the ID3. And I have criticized this infotainment system the way everything is controlled via the touch capacitive buttons, the lack of physical buttons for years. I've been a huge critique of this car and Volkswagen are going to go back to physical steering wheel buttons and there is an update for the facelifted version of this car that should be a lot better. But with that being said, I still think that the infotainment system in this car is better than a lot of the Chinese cars I've used. And let me just show you guys quickly. So the ca touch capacity buttons, yeah, they're not the best, but you actually have all the functions here that you need. You have your media controls here. You can, you know, uh, control your screen and then you have your adaptive cruise control. So actually it, it works quite nicely. And in this latest iteration, I think they've fixed some of the software issues and bugs. So it's actually not bad to use at all, but everything is just logically laid out. And then you have the screen here also. We're now on um, Google Maps here using Apple CarPlay. And as you guys can see, my phone is here and it's completely wireless. It works every time. And if I wanna do anything else, it's, it's very simple. I can just press this menu button here and then it brings me to the home screen and then I can press this again and then I come to the menu screen. So it's not bad. And then when I wanna go back, I just press that. The Hongxi EHS9, I was driving last week 
didn't let you exit this screen while it was connected. So once you were in Apple CarPlay, you weren't able to exit, which is just really, really weird. And once somebody called me, the call screen took up the whole real estate of the screen. So I couldn't even see where I was going. And lastly, it's very buggy. It didn't work half of the time. And also it was tethered. So you couldn't, you know, use it wireless. The Septic Go is one of the most stylish home chargers you can buy. Actually one of the best on the market, one best in test in the independent test from the Norwegian Automobile Association in 2022 of home chargers. Septic also the sponsor of today's video. So if you want to get this stylish home charger that can charge up to 11 kilowatts on AC charging and works with every electric car, even a Tesla, go to the link in the description box down below, click on your country and order one from there. Moving forward, for every new Chinese auto manufacturer, for every new Chinese model, for every new update and facelift to a current model, these new cars just keep on impressing more and more and becoming better and better and closing the gap to their European and Japanese and Korean counterparts. I'm pretty sure once the Chinese figure out how to make working adaptive cruise control that doesn't slow down the car annoyingly once you just put in a little bit of steering angle, once they figure out how to make proper stereos and how they figure out to make properly working infotainment systems and screens that actually work when it's bright outside because some of the screen qualities in some of these cars just isn't up to par. Once they figure out all of these niggles and bugs and hurdles, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be making a video of how good they are. Yes, they are good, but to live with on a daily basis, I think a lot of these things I've mentioned in this video is a deal breaker. Just go watch some of my Neo videos where I titled the video, the most annoying good cars that exist because they're really good, but at the same time, super annoying and frustrating to use and to live with. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.